Hi, welcome to Bookie. Today we will unlock poor economics, a radical rethinking of the way to fight global poverty. In 2020, a total of 7.8 billion people live on this planet. The difference between people's living conditions is directly reflected in income. If we roughly divide the 7.8 billion people into half poor and half rich, do you know how many rich people have the same wealth as the 3.9 billion people whose income is below the median? The answer is just the top 26 billionaires. This figure comes from Antonio Guterres, the current UN Secretary General. He called for a wider and fairer distribution of wealth and opportunity in a speech on July 18. In many cultures in the past, demeaning the poor wasn't a taboo. People often said the poor are lazy, short-sighted, and mean, and are responsible for their predicament. The opposing view is that qualities like nobility and self-improvement are equally hidden in everyone, and the poor simply lack the environment and opportunities that produce these qualities. Different beliefs have given rise to different ideas about assistance. Still, not all ideas improve the poor's situation, such as establishing free markets, calling for the promotion of human rights, giving more funding, and rejecting foreign assistance. So, what kind of aid plans are effective? In the past 15 years, to figure out the causes of poverty and what problems poverty can cause that make it difficult for the poor to escape poverty, Duflo and Bonnergie investigated deeply into 18 impoverished countries and regions on five continents to explore the causes of poverty and possible solutions. They examined the daily life, education, health, and economic situation of the poor as well as government policies and assistance from non-governmental organizations. Based on the results of randomized controlled trials, Duflo and Bonnergie put forward many practical suggestions that guide policymakers, philanthropists, and others who are committed to poverty alleviation. These suggestions are included in this book. Next, we will unlock this book in three parts. Part 1, The Health of the Poor. Part 2, The Education of the Poor. Part 3, The Economics of the Poor. It is evident that a healthy body is a prerequisite for poverty alleviation, and governments and non-governmental organizations are committed to improving the health of citizens. There are both low-cost and high-yield programs. Yet, the important factor is that the program can be implemented. Every year, 9 million children around the world die before the age of 5, mostly in South Asia and Sub-Saharan Africa. Diarrhea is a major cause of death. It kills one-fifth of these children. Usually, it's the rotavirus that causes diarrhea in children, and relevant vaccines are thankfully being developed. However, before a vaccine is developed, we already have two solutions, purifying the tap water to cut off the transmission of the virus and using an oral solution to prevent dehydration. However, neither disinfectant nor an oral solution is widely used. In Zambia, it only costs 18 cents to buy disinfectant for a family of six to use for a month, and 48% of children can therefore be protected from diarrhea. Yet, only 10% of households use disinfectant. In India, only one-third of diarrhea patients under five years old take an oral solution. Most mothers do not believe an oral solution can cure their children. They prefer antibiotics or intravenous injection. One nurse told Duflo and Bonnergy that mothers who were given a pack of oral solution never returned to the hospital. Do these people care nothing about the health of themselves and their families? Of course not. They not only care but also have invested a lot of resources in their health. However, they usually spend money on expensive treatments rather than cheap prevention. They will ask a doctor to use antibiotics, or they will ask to have a surgery that is too late to make any difference. The question is, why don't they choose cheap and efficient precautions? In other words, what prevents them from picking those low-hanging fruit? Let's look at how an experiment illustrates this question. Take the vaccine for example.